Great Justin Turner. Turner has done it again. It is a walk-off home run for Justin Turner. Well hit to left, and it is gone. Justin Turner. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ha, 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 ha. Jason, how you doing there, man? Doing good. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I really appreciate you doing this. No Look at this guy. He's ready for the lob mic. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> Justin Turner, welcome to Baseball Stories. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Let's start with this. October 15th, 1988. Three-year-old Dodger fan, Justin Turner, at your grandmother's house. And then Kirk Gibson limps up to bat. And look who's coming up. You talk about a roll of the dice. This is it. You told me once that you actually remember this. What do you remember about it? I just remember laying on the floor. Uh, the whole family was, was there watching the game and remember seeing him come up. High fly ball into right field. She is gone! He hits the home run and everyone just jumping around going crazy. Like I said, I was only, <laughs> I was only three, so almost four. I was a month away from being right. four. Right, okay. we'll uh, give you credit for four. But yeah, that's one of my earliest uh, baseball memories other than, you know, some videos that my parents have of me, you know, hitting <laughs> off a tee or something when I was really little. But uh, one of the earliest memories I have of baseball was, was seeing Gibby hit that home run. You know, growing up, my whole family were, were Dodger fans, and so that was obviously a pretty incredible moment. And uh, you know, I wasn't obviously not old enough to uh, to really grasp what was going on, but looking back at it now, uh, it's something that I'm definitely glad I remember. So, how cool is it that 29 years later, to the day, the Dodger who hits the next postseason walk-off homer was you? And Turner in the air to center field. That ball's hit well. Martinez on the run. This is way back, and it is gone. It is a walk-off home run for Justin Turner. Yeah, that was pretty wild. And uh, you know, the funny thing was, is you know, nowadays with with social media and stuff, you know, I was aware that it was the anniversary of, of him hitting it on the, on that day. Uh, but in the moment, you know, it wasn't something that I really thought about until you know I was rounding second base and I was like, oh my gosh, like. Gibby, like, do I do I do the Gibby? Do I do the fist pump? And uh, you know, it's just when you do something like that in, in that big a spot in that big a moment, uh, you know, a million things are going through your mind. It's hard to even remember what was what was happening. I just remember going around second, and that thought literally crossed my mind. And then I saw Coach Woodward at, at third, and gave him a high five. And next thing I know, I look and see all my teammates standing at home plate, and it's the first walk-off home run I've ever hit in my life, so uh, I was just trying not to, uh, <laughs> didn't really know what to do. I threw my helmet and got excited. I think I was beating on my chest. I don't know why I did that, but uh, it's just an incredible moment, and then to do it on that day, um, obviously, and afterwards to, to get a text message from Gibby himself uh, congratulating me and, and saying, you know, he was proud proud of that moment for myself and, and for the Dodgers and uh, was was pretty special. Yeah, I mean, how many guys could have a Kirk Gibson moment who actually remembered the Kirk Gibson moment? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Swing and a drive! Absolute madness! You made your first All-Star team last year. Of, of all the guys in that All-Star game, you think that any of them could possibly have had a more unlikely journey than you? Release, non-tender, four organizations? Uh, I don't know. I know everyone Everyone has their own path and they find their own way to uh, to the major leagues and uh, you know some of them on paper look a little bit more glamorous than others and uh, I've talked about it a few times. I think the, the way you know I got to that all-star game 
was perfect for me. Uh, you know, with the swing adjustments that I had to make and uh, being a utility guy for four years in New York, kind of really buying time for me to meet Marlon Bird and, and Doug Latta, who helped me kind of completely retool my swing, uh, was huge for me. And if I would have got to the big leagues with the Mets and they would have made me a starter and I didn't have the success because my swing wasn't where, where it should have been, uh, you know, I might have been out of the game before I ever had the opportunity to meet those guys. So it kind of, you know, all lined up perfectly and, and worked out worked out as good as it could for, for myself to, to get to that point. Yeah, I mean, the look on your face said that, said that you appreciated it. And yet, I don't, I, I'm sure when you were with the Mets, you didn't know you were buying time. Um, in fact, I, wa I want to ask you about this. Um, that, that winter of 2013, 2014, your cell phone rings. You're just getting ready to drive to a meeting of the Players Association, right? Yeah. And it's Sandy Alderson telling you you were non-tendered. I mean, what are the emotions that you go through at a moment like that? Yeah, that was tough for me. Um, like I said, I met Marlon in 2013 and had just started kind of scratching the surface of, of making some adjustments at the plate. Hits it deep to left. Back goes Lee, looking up near the wall, and it's out of here! Justin Turner with a three-run homer. I think I ended the year in New York feeling more like an offensive player than I ever had in my entire career. I was uh, starting to drive balls uh, all over the field and feeling really comfortable at the plate. And I uh, thought I was starting to turn a corner. And as a utility guy, uh, I don't know what the numbers were. I think I hit 280 or something coming off the bench, you know, playing four positions. Uh, for that role, I thought I had a pretty successful year. So to get that phone call uh, was probably the last thing I'd ever expected. And uh, it was tough. You know, I, I had a lot of great friendships and still have a lot of great friendships with those guys over there. And um, like you said, I was driving down to the, the association meetings to actually be the representative for the Mets because, uh, you know, Murph couldn't make it. Um, and. Uh, David couldn't make it, and the list goes on and on of guys who couldn't be there. So I was just down in San Diego, a short drive for me. So I was like, I'll go do it. I'll, I'll, I'll be the guy. And um, yeah, I, had to, I had to stop for a minute and, and try to figure out what I was going to do. Am I still going to go down there? What do I tell everyone? Um, you know, it's almost it's it's kind of embarrassing, you know, to show up and, and everyone's going around the room, introducing themselves, saying what team they're with. And I had to, you know, say, hey, Justin Turner, uh, you know, just got non-tendered by the Mets, <laughs> current free agent. So uh, it was rough, and uh, you know it stuck with me for a long time. Still, still sticks with me a little bit. When you say it sticks with you, um, in in what way? Does that does that memory drive you in some way? Yeah, I think a little bit. Um, obviously, when when someone tells you, you know, you're not good enough to to help their team win, uh, I think a part of you takes it personally and. Uh, fortunately for me, I was able to land here in, a, in the great organization of the, of the Los Angeles Dodgers and, um, you know, kind of got thrown right back into that same role and, and wanted to prove, you know, who on a team that was in a lot better position at the time uh, that I was more than capable of, of being in that role. And, uh, you know, it definitely did drive me a little bit, uh, especially early in my first couple years with the Dodgers to, to prove that you know, I'm a major league player. I don't think we could do this conversation without talking about hair and facial hair. It, it's hard not to notice that you have a little less of it. Did your wife might have had some thoughts about this. Hey, animal. Oh, hey, Justin Turner. You know, a lot of the guys say me and you look exactly alike. Me no see it. Me either. <laughs> You're very active uh, on social media. I know that right before spring training, you went back and forth uh, with a bunch of fans on the uh, the free agent freeze out. How much courage does it take to do that on Twitter? Yeah, it's 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 tough, and it's probably not the best uh, platform for that because you know you you get into back and forth with some people you don't even know who they are, and you end up probably saying stuff that you shouldn't say but uh, you know I just wanted to get out there and and you know say that I want the game to be competitive for for every team I want every team to try to win uh, I don't think it's fair if you have you know two or three teams in in one division that are you know 
rebuilding, uh, you know, the way that they call it, I guess. Um, you know, that's not fair for, you know, those teams and those two, two, the two teams in the division uh, to get to play against three teams that are rebuilding. And when you come out in the NL West and you have five teams who are, you know, making moves and, and being competitive, uh, it just makes for an imbalance in, in the game. I think uh, as a player, and I'll, I don't like to speak for other players, but we, we just want competitive. We want everyone to try to win and everyone to compete. And I think the game's the healthiest when everyone's going out there putting, putting their best team on the field and, and trying to win as many games as they can. Whenever we go out and, and we make a statement, you know, the, the immediate feedback or the immediate answer that we get most often is, oh, you guys make a ton of money and you're, you're complaining about it. And, you know, that's, uh, we do make a lot of money and, and we're not complaining about that. We, we love the game of baseball. We love where we're at. We, like I said, we just want to see teams go out and compete every day and, and we want to play against the best of the best. And that's when baseball's fun. That's when, when you have two really, really good teams coming into a series and playing. That's, those are the fun games to play. It's, it's not fun to go out there when, you know, it feels like teams aren't putting their best product on there. It's on its way, and it is gone! Justin Turner! Marlon Bird, Doug Lotta. It's hard to, to totally remake your swing when you are playing in the big leagues. How did you do it with those two guys? You're right, it is really hard. And I think the mentality most guys have is, I got to the major leagues hitting my way. Why would I change it now? I'm, I'm at the pinnacle of, of our sport at the highest level. Uh, why would I make a change? And uh, it took five or six months of Marlon in my ear talking about hitting. He would say a lot of stuff to me and I'd listen and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would go off kind of on my own in the cage and, and try to try it out and see how it felt. And uh, finally, I got to the point, you know, it was through July, end of July. I still didn't have any home runs, uh, was getting base hits, but not, you know, slugging. And in this game, you got to slug to stick around. So. Uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try it. Uh, we were in Cleveland for that weekend and, uh, you know, <laughs> went up. I hit two homers in Cleveland. And I was like, oh my gosh, this feels incredible. I, it was a feeling that I've never had before. I, like I said, I felt dangerous in the box. I felt like I could drive uh, balls to all over the park. And, uh, you know, once you get that small taste of it, you know, you. you you get obsessed with it and you want more and and so that off season when Marlon said hey you know the guy that I hit with is in Northridge which is not too far from where I was living at the time and uh, in North Hollywood I think uh, it was it was a no-brainer to drive up there and, and hit with those guys and, and like I said five days a week we were in the cage Marlon was great he was there every day um, along with Doug uh, watching film, breaking stuff down, making suggestions, try your hands here, try your hands here, see if you can feel this. And it was just a constant little bit of tweaks here, a little bit of tweaks there until I finally got to a spot where I, I was able to repeat my swing over and over again. And it was the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. And I mean, now you're kind of the poster boy for launch angle. I'm sure you didn't know you were at the time, but roll the clock forward five years and it's all anybody talks about in this sport. And so I know the impact that you have in your clubhouse. I can only imagine how many people are picking your brain. When I went in and was hitting with Doug and, and even that year in, in 2013 with Marlon, all they talked about was getting the ball in the air, get the ball in the air, get the ball in the air, don't hit ground balls, get the ball in the air. So, I mean, realistically, they were, they were talking about launch angle before, you know, anyone saw the stat cast on the TV. They were talking about uh, getting it in the air. And then now it just so happens there's a way to measure it and, and to have it you know, instantly. So uh, it's something I've definitely bought into. Um, I preach to my guys and anyone I talk to about hitting, you know, at the major league level, uh, especially for me, a guy who doesn't run well, I would say average at best. If I hit a ball on the ground and a guy catches it, I'm out. It doesn't matter if he's diving or sliding <laughs> or, or where he's going, I'm probably going to be out. So it's, it's almost a disservice to try to hit a ground ball. Uh, you know, and, and on, on another note, you know, I said it earlier, slugging is a way to stick around in this game. You got to be able to slug and, and there's no slugging on the ground unless you're hooking balls down the lines and, and that's, that's some pretty bad hitting. So it, it does happen, but 
no one's try, going up there saying, oh, I'm going to try to hook a ball down the third baseline. So you really have to think about getting the ball there, getting the ball in the gaps uh, if you want to if you want to slug and you want to do damage. They say way back to the dawn of humanity, beards evolve because ladies like them. I don't think we could do this conversation without talking about hair and facial hair because you're Justin Turner, man. <laughs> and it, it's hard not to notice that you have a little less of it than the last time we saw you. You also got married over the winter. I'm just gonna guess that maybe this is a related development, right? That, that your wife might have had some thoughts about this. She didn't actually. Oh, really? uh, she, you know, I, I asked her if she wanted me to do anything and she said to do whatever I wanted. If I wanted to keep it, that's fine. And uh, I made the decision to uh, shave the beard down and, and trim the hair up. Wanted to look respectable for, you know, the wedding photos. Those things last forever. My hair will grow back, my beard will grow back. So. Um, it's been kind of nice, though. I, I, I kind of like it. It's a little cooler without the long hair and the, and the big beard. So. You, you had a lot of beard. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, it was hard not to notice that as the, the beard grew and the hair grew, the numbers grew. I mean, do you think that, that was a coincidence? It can't be, really, can it? No. Be I mean, I, 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 every year I, I come into camp and my beard's short and my hair's shorter, and I kind of just let it let it grow with the season. It's not really a want this long, I keep it long. I always <laughs> I always trim it down at the end of the year and, and start over fresh and just kind of let it go as the season goes along. Like, don't you have to wind up on this last season of Game of Thrones? Would, would yeah, be? I don't know if that's going to happen, <laughs> but it, it'd be cool, but uh, I don't see that happening. Um, it's your, your lookalike, right, with Tormund? Tormund, yeah, yeah, I get it all the time. I, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of doppelgangers on social media, so uh, Tormund's definitely one of them. Every kid dreams to be, you know, a superstar in the major league. You don't dream to be a, you know, 25th man in the major league. Swing and a drive! Absolute madness! Would you ever have imagined that your career would go like this? I think I'd hoped that it would, and, and I'd you know, hope that I got the opportunity and, and was in a good enough place to take advantage of that opportunity. And I think that's a lot of what this game is, is being ready for when you get that chance, when you get that call, when you get your opportunity to play every day, to take advantage of it. And it just so happened that, you know, I'd put in so much work in that off season. I was hitting five days a week, changing everything essentially. And uh, I got to a place that felt really good and, and you know, was able to put up a, huge year for me offensively and I, as a as a bench player I, I hit 340 that year I hit seven homers which was more homers than I'd ever hit um, so everything was feeling good and I was excited and just really starting to learn uh, you know my swing and learn how to be an offensive player so uh, like I said you hope to get that opportunity you every kid dreams to be you know, a superstar in the major league. You don't dream to be a, you know, 25th man in the major league. So uh, to say that, you know, I didn't hope that, would, I'd be lying to you. There was another Justin Turner social media phenomenon last summer. I know your, your, your walk-up music is an Ed Sheeran song, right? And Ed Sheeran comes out to play his encore wearing your jersey. Did you find out about that through social media? I, I, I did. I did. I, you know, I knew he was in town and I knew he was performing and we were trying to figure out a way to where I could get to the Staples Center to, to see the concert or have him come to Dodger Stadium and the schedules just weren't working out. And, um, you know, I, it kind of got to the point where it was like, you know what, let's, it's not going to happen this time. We'll figure out something down the road and, and try to work it out. And, uh, but I had no idea he was going to go on stage and, and with a Turner jersey in, in the Stable Center and, and do the encore of Shave of You. And uh, after the game that night, we had a we had a seven o'clock game Saturday night, and I come back in and my phone was uh, just blown up, text messages, tweets, Instagrams, and everyone saying, "Oh, Ed Sheeran's wearing a Turner jersey on stage." And I guess. Uh, I had some friends who were actually there at the concert and uh, they said the Staples Center just erupted wow. and went crazy and uh, again going back to our fans and how how much they mean to me personally and us as an organization uh, they're the best fans in baseball best fans in the world uh, they got me to my first all-star game with over 20 million votes and uh, it was just something that was really cool to hear the reaction of all the people there 
you know, when Ed came out and that. And I actually got a chance to meet him uh, about a month later. Uh, he yeah. came back to LA for Jingle Ball and I went down and got to talk to him. Great guy. So what was the story behind him wearing your jersey? Uh, I don't know how he ended up with it. I still don't know. <laughs> I think uh, one of the one of the guys that was working, uh, gave, he wore the Friday night. He wore a Kings jersey. I don't know which player he wore, but he had a Kings jersey on. I know that. And then Saturday he he wore the the Dodger, the Justin Turner jersey. So it was pretty sweet. But I don't know how. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> All the ways you're going to measure how far you've come since that day you got non-tendered. Where does Ed Sheeran wearing your jersey rank? Yeah, it's pretty pretty high up there. Uh, like I said, definitely caught me off guard and was very surprising and he's an international superstar so uh and even more so when i when i got a chance to meet him and talk to him you know he said you know i don't know a whole lot about baseball i've been to a couple games before uh but it's just you know to to get to that where you know he's willing to i, I guess take a risk and, and wear that jersey out there he doesn't know how how uh the fans are going to react so that's uh, pretty special and pretty high up there on, on my charts. It's cool. Well, let, let's end this kind of the way we started it. If you're going to ask me uh, who's the Kirk Gibson figure on this Dodgers team, I would say you, right? So do you, do you ever think about those three-year-old kids or four-year-old kids who are out there watching you and the impact that you can have on them? Uh, definitely. Definitely, and uh, you know we're not always going to have time to sign autographs for everyone who's out there. But if you can just stop for a second and say hi to a kid, or give him a high five, or uh, go over and give him a, a fist bump, uh, it's little things like that that go a long way and, and create big dreams for those little kids like we were at one time in our life. And uh, you know that's something that you know I try to keep in mind every time I step on the field is that. Uh, there's a lot of people watching, and you're setting an example, and really, ultimately, you're you're creating uh, a huge dream for a little kid somewhere out there watching to one day uh, stand on the field that you're standing on, just like you know I did when I was a little kid. Yeah, and you're you're a guy whose baseball dream came true, and it, I mean, it didn't have to come true; it could end it a whole different way. So, if there's a moral to your story, what do you think it is? Ah. Uh, just to be relentless and uh, you know there's a lot of lot of bad stuff that's gonna come at you at life and uh, you really have two options you can you know put your head down and feel sorry for yourself or you can get right back to work and, and try to prove prove people wrong every single day Justin that was awesome man thanks very much for doing this thanks for having me I appreciate it